I'm Samuel Mbuku. I work for the Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, Karo. Sometimes back, um, five years ago, we started a conversation on the upgrading of the SIWO uh, genetic resources in the country. In that, we engaged with the uh, National Research Fund, the NRF, and we got a grant uh, for stimulating the development of the SIWO genetic resources in this particular area. And that's why we started then uh, the upgrading program, the genetic improvement program, uh, in partnership with the University of Nairobi, the Kenya Animal Genetic Resources Center, and the State Department for Livestock. The main challenge with the SIWO cattle is access to the breeding stock. That is the breeding males and the breeding females. Uh, we have found uh, many farmers, you know, queuing for animal, for their breeding materials from our Karo Naifasha, you know, station. That is and was not sustainable. And we and we meant a, a decision and intervention to have a, a multiplication program as relating the access to the genetic material by farmers in this particular area of Narok County. Uh, it was very difficult to get one bull, single bull. Uh, we travel all the way to Naivasha and uh, when you get to Naivasha it is also very hard to get one but also if you get it is very expensive. Looking broadly uh, we wanted to increase the milk yield output in this area. We wanted to have many breeding animals especially males in that way, we were looking at lowering the cost of the animals in terms of purchasing from Naivasha. That's why artificial insemination technology comes in. For this program, we decided to use the, what we call the ISTRA synchronization and artificial insemination. It is a technology where the principle, the main principle is to delay ISTRA's cycle in animals so that the, all the animals under the program can come on it at the same time. And that means they'll be served at the same day, the same time. And uh, we had to explain this to farmers. We had ground rules on how to go about this. And uh, we trained them why we need these ground rules. And uh, once this was agreed, we went ahead to select animals. Not all animals qualified for the program because there were issues that we looked at. For example, the body condition of the animal was very critical criteria. We also looked at the ovaries of the animals, looking at all the biological processes and the physiological fitness of the animals for inclusion into this program. After that, of course, uh, farmers in the clusters, we had animals close to 300, 500 per cluster, which were selected for this program. And uh, now during the, uh, the, the period that we, we undertook this program, we, had, we prepared what we call the protocol for estrus signalization and artificial examination. It's a program which essentially takes a, a minimum of around 11 days continuously from the first day that you inject the first hormone to the last day that you inseminate the animal with uh, the required you know semen and the semen also was selected from top bulls domiciled at uh, Kagrik. some of these bulls actually are not there they died some times ago but the semen is of top quality we went there and selected the best semen for these particular animals. When we came here, of course, there was a lot of resistance, uh, bearing in mind that this is a new technology, and specifically where they were not using the bulls directly for natural service, which they were used to. 
they didn't know exactly what this uh, artificial insemination will mean and whether they will even have any calves. Wakati tu meletewa hii maneno ya AI na juu ile wakati sisi kama jamii ya ma sijaelewa vizuri ati njao wanaesasaliwa bila ndume kupanda ngombe. Tukakuja kuona wakati kampuni ya livestock atulekea sisi hii nini hii njao hii ngombe yetu AI kupandisha kuambira. Sisi tukatenga hii ngombe yetu kuweka hii shamba tukiangalia ngombe kumbe ngombe anasakua ako na mimba ya AI akakuja kusaa sisi tukashukuru sana kwa sababu tumefurahi hiyo ni ndume ya maana na ni ndisaiwa ya kawaida kama wale wengine tunaenda kununua kwa pesa huko and um, when we took them through the um, creation of the awareness you know meetings many meetings with the community leaders many meetings with the leadership you know provincial administration, the chiefs and so forth, uh, the local leadership, political leadership, uh, the MCAs, we, we had a conversation and we started to, they started to gain the story. And uh, then we went to identify farmers from different uh, regions, uh, you know, villages and locations in here, where we got uh, uh, 12 clusters, and from those uh, 12 clusters, not everybody was boarding. We took some progressive farmers to start, up, to start with. And uh, some of these even progressive farmers, we took them for training in Ivasha on these uh, assistant, assisted reproductive technologies. Advantages of using AI compared to the bulls is phenomenal when you utilize artificial insemination. First, uh, the cost of buying a bull from Naivasha or from other ranches is around 150,000 Kenya shillings. Then this transportation cost, probably put it at 30,000 per bull. That animal will be here at around 180 thousand Kenya shillings and even the farmer has to wait for close to three years some four years to get the bull because of the list the queue is long in Naivasha. The cost of administering uh, uh, artificial insemination is cost around 1,500 Kenya shillings. If there will be a repeat, then the farmer might pay 1,000 Kenya shillings. And these animals have high fertility. The chances of repeat is very minimal. So if you compare this with the challenges of having the bull, procuring the bull, bring it here, and also maintain the bull is very high. Sometimes these bulls also have these uh, zoonotic diseases and the, the probability of transferring the diseases to the females becomes high. The artificial insemination, the semen doesn't have these diseases. So there is no chance of trans, trans, uh, transferring these reproductive diseases to the females. So that is another advantage. And uh, it is possible using AI to use bulls, superior bulls, which are not, which are not, which died sometimes ago. And that's why you can see the bulls, the calves that we are getting from here. They are more superior in terms of the body size, even looking at the, the you know, the reproductivity, how aggressive they are, the bulls and so forth. You can see these are some of the breeds which were the original cywars, and now we are propagating them in a population. Ya samani, hakuna maziwa. Anakamua ngombe kumi na. Naenda kupata maziwa nyingi. Lakini hii, nakamua ngombe mbili, ine, tano, maziwa nakua mingi sana. E. Sustainability of technologies, whatever, requires organized groups. We didn't talk to 
the community, the leadership, and they organize themselves into what we are calling the Ilatia community, uh, the ACBO, which is now propagating the cyber uh, development, multiplication and conservation in this particular uh, area. Latia community was introduced by Dr. Mbugu and his team at Calro and uh, assisted by some other groups, related groups uh, like Life Story Recording Center, the AU IBA group uh, funded by European Union and your farmers were benefited in uh, many ways. One, they benefited because the former livestock were small and uh, when this breed came of AI, now we have a, a better breed than what we have some years back. Uh, for example, uh, some years back you can sell a cow with around uh, 12,000, 15,000 and now you can sell one at 100,000 and bulls 150,000. So now if you sell one cow, you can be able to take your kids to school. First, the second and the third phase that we undertook this program during the span of this uh, particular initiative by CARO and the NRF, we have in total about 309 calves born out of this program, of course spread in the three, in the three phases. And from there, we have more than 170 males, and of course, of course, um, over 130 females, just from this program. Look at even the productivity, you'll see a difference. You see a difference because these avas they are producing uh, around eight liters uh, per day on normal pasture with very minimal supplementation, if any. Um, for example, if you look at uh, the animals in uh, Moyoni, they are producing uh, around even uh, six liters to seven liters without supplementation. Before these animals were giving around uh, two, three liters. So you can see there's a change going on, which is phenomenal. And if, if you look at even the business angle, the profitability, if you get a farmer producing eight liters and probably selling five liters uh, in a day and has that animals, that's around 150 liters per day. And the, I, I, if you look at the market prices, around 28 shillings per liter, that the farmer is getting 4,200 Kenya shillings every day with 30 animals producing, selling five liters in an animal. If you translate that in a month, that farmer is getting around 126,000 per month. If you leave the 26,000 for maybe labor and the drugs and so forth, the farmer has a cool 100,000 in his bank uh, in, in a month with 30 animals only from Sayo. You can see it's a phenomenal. That's translate to even uh, over a million in a, in a year. We are not even talking about the females and the males that they are selling. You can see the business are going this. And it is transformative in nature. The Buga Mombe has Sebu, Saidia Maga Atakumi, Naya Sewol, Magamoja, and Nusu Magambili Sewol Ligotari, where you find near Cassiago, and Semi Mayfa, and Momba in a Quaraka Saidi. Here, Naziko Namasiwa Saidi, Napia Pesa, Pelaka Soko, in a Jugula Quaraka Mata, Wakulima, and Aguja, which you go to Bomba Pai. Aguna Raja Wangaye to Pelaka Soko and Aguja when you go to Bomba, and Skia Mali Mombe in Guapiva. Wanakuja.